Welcome you to the Forestville New Redeemer Baptist Church live stream worship service. Can I get a hallelujah and an amen? I pray that everyone is doing well. We're excited for another Sunday to connect with you today. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we just love you today. We just simply honor you because you are God and there is no other. God, we don't take it for granted that you decided to put breath in our body today. And for that, we just want to say thank you. We ask you to be in the midst of this service today, Lord God. We continue to 
share our gratitude for you, God, for allowing us to continue to come together, even in the midst of a pandemic. We just want to say thank you. God, I thank you that your spirit continues to move. I thank you that your word still goes forth. And we pray today, Lord God, that somebody will receive a word from you that will be encouraging and uplifting, that will transform and set free, deliver. God, and I thank you right now, Lord God, that you get the glory today, God. We'll forever give you praise and glory because you're worthy. It's in your son Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. 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 If you are joining with us through Facebook, you know what to do. We ask that you like our Facebook page and share this video with your followers, family, and friends. If this is your first time joining with us, type first time in the comment section. We'd love to connect with you. If you want to know more about our ministry or simply desire prayer, visit our website at www.forcefornewredeemer.org and click on the prayer request tab. Or you can call our church line at 301-736-4488. Someone will respond and connect with you as soon as possible. We are excited about our upcoming Vacation Bible School starting this Monday, July 20th through the 24th from 6.30 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. The theme this year is Concrete and Crane, Building on the Love of Jesus, coming from Philippians 1 and 6. There will be classes for all ages, youth and adults. There is still time to register by clicking the link in the comment section or visiting our website or Facebook page today. After our Vacation Bible School this week, we will be on a short hiatus during the month of August from our weekly prayer calls, Bible study, and Saturday church school. But we ask that you continue to tune in weekly as we dig in the vault and bring you past sermons from our pastor that will continue to encourage and inspire you during the month. We will return refreshed and new in September. At this time, we want to encourage you to sow into this ministry with your tithes and offerings. Please receive Deacon Early Taylor. Good morning, and God bless you, and thank you for being with us uh, this morning in our uh, Sunday morning worship service. Uh, we just thank God for you, and this part of the service is where we do our tithes and our offering, and I'm just going to share with you here a, a moment of how, what God's Word says about the tithe. So I'll be coming from the, uh, from the Bible, uh, from the chapter of Le uh, Leviticus, chapter 27, the book of Levit Leviticus, chapter 27, the 30th verse. And after I share the scripture and we do our confession, Minister Christian is going to come back to you. She's going to share with you of all the different ways that you can give virtually at our virtual service and our tithes and our offering. Uh, Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 says that, uh, and all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. Amen. And, and, uh, and what it says here is that, that, that seed and that tithe is holy, amen? The Lord, it is holy unto the Lord. And we see in verse 32, uh, concerning, it says, concerning the offering of the herd or the flock of whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. So this talks about the ten percent. So we thank God for his word. And, and clearly here God said that the tithe is holy. And he calls for it to be holy, amen? And, uh, then we're going to go right to our confession, and then we're going to go into prayer. So here's the confession. You can repeat this after after me. Lord, in your word, you call the offering holy and say that it is yours. I bring my offering to you today as an act of worship to you, and I believe that you will pour out a blessing on my life, that there will not be room enough to receive it all. Oh. I want to make sure you got all in there. I stand on your word in faith. Amen. If you did that confession, believe it. And God is going to, God is going to give it. Amen. And he's going to protect your, our finances. And we just thank God for his blessing and his promises. Let us pray. Father God, bless this tithe and offering today, oh Lord God. Bless the giver, oh Heavenly Father. And Lord God, we just know, Lord God, that your word is real and your word is true. So we thank thank you, Lord God, for this offering. And we lift it up and we give it, return it back to you, oh Lord God, that it may be used for the building and the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Deacon Early, for that inspiring word. There are three ways you can give to our ministry. Number one, type Forestville to 77977. Number two, visit our website at forcewithnewredeemer.org and click on the giving tab. And number three, you can mail in your offering to our church at 7808 Marlboro Pike, Forestville, Maryland, 20747. We are grateful for your giving and we truly, truly pray a blessing upon you. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I am looking forward to a word from God. It's been a busy week for me, and I know we've gone through a lot. We've lost some people along the way, and so we just need a word to encourage us today, and our pastor has a word just for you. Our scripture for today will be from Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 5 through 12, and it reads, Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabitha, Hodiah, Messiah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, and Peleah instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and the teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a holy day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to this word. So after a throwback selection from our young adult praise team, we will hear from our pastor, Reverend Dr. Nathaniel B. Thomas. God bless you.
go now. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, I hear you. Oh. Praise God, church. It's been good. It's been good. It's been good. I'm just enjoying the music in my ears of the young adult uh, praise team. They still sing it. They still sing it in my ears. And I just want to say I thank them so very much. Just want to praise you. Want to praise you. And I want to thank Minister Coatley for being the great announcer that she is. We intend to have a great time in the Lord. Amen. And I want to thank you for joining this broadcast this morning. And that if this is your first time joining us, uh, we would love for you to type in first time. And we also ask that you like our Facebook. Like our Facebook. Get in the chat section. Tell tell your friends, tell your neighbors, share with the, uh, the service that we are having uh, this morning. God is so good, and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. At this time, let us pray. Father God in heaven, we come this day, O oh God, to say thank you. I thank you, O oh God, for this another day. I thank you, O oh God, for you truly worthy to be praised. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your sharing and your caring. God bless this service in a special way. I ask you, O oh God, that I want to be behind you and that you go forth as the word is preached this day. Hold us, keep us, guide us, and lead us. In all of these blessings we ask in your name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to lift up, you've heard the scriptures read already, Nehemiah the 8th chapter. I want to lift up the last sentence in Jeremiah. Nehemiah, I'm sorry. In Nehemiah the 8th chapter. And it reads thusly. It says, this day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this is the day that is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is yours. For the joy of the Lord is yours. I want to share a thought with you this morning. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Nehemiah demonstrated excellent leadership. And he was spiritually ready <laughs> to head and go about God's call. Nehemiah used careful planning, teamwork, and problem solving, and encouraged the workers to get the job done. Here we see that he gave the task, he was given the task to rebuild the wall. Many who had been in exile now returning to Jerusalem. After many years, the wall needed repairs. Otherwise, they would have been 
defenseless and vulnerable to the enemy. Nehemiah, I notice here, seeks permission from the Persian king to go to Jerusalem. And upon getting there, he realized that the people were, he was trying to mobilize the people, if you will, to get ready for the rebuilding of the wall. Now, Miramah was faced with a lot of opposition. I just noticed that it doesn't matter what we do and we take on leadership, opposition will come our way. But Nehemiah was faced with opposition, both from within as well as from without. You know, it's rough when you have outside components coming in at you. But it's worse when you have those on the inside bucking against you. But Nehemiah persevered until the project was completed and the city resettled. I can tell you right now that no matter where the opposition may come in our lives, we have to be persistent and not look to your left, not look to your right, but to keep moving forward as Jeremiah, as Nehemiah did. Although he had tremendous faith, he never avoided the extra work that was necessary to be a good leader. We have to a lot of times step out of our comfort zone if we're going to be a good leader, as Nehemiah was. Nehemiah had to step out of his comfort zone. This morning, this morning, I want to share with us some of the traits of Nehemiah. And one of the traits of Nehemiah was that life can be tough, but don't give up. I said life can be tough, but we can't give up. In a tough race, we can't quit. I can tell you right now, sooner or later, you'll reach the plateau of looking at the work that seems to be so hard and you can't see your way through, but you can't give up. Life can be tough, but don't give up. Don't give up, church. After the work had begun, Nehemiah was faced with scorn. Nehemiah was faced with slander. Nehemiah was faced with threats from his enemies. And on the inside, Nehemiah was faced with a group of people to whom he was leading had fear. And because of fear, conflict began to come about on the inside as well as discouragement from his own workers. I can tell you right now that in spite of the problem Nehemiah was having, he refused, great God from Zion, he refused to follow those issues that tried to stop him from completing the job. We have to be at a point, church, if God has given you a task, don't let nobody separate you from not only the word of God, but from the love of God for that which he has given us to do. Yes, we are faced with a pandemic. Yes, we don't know whether our children will be able to go back to school. Yes, we don't know whether or not we're going to have a job tomorrow. Yes, we don't know what our health may be with ourselves as well as our loved ones. But we got to recognize that we still have to stay on target with the Lord. I can tell you right now that in order for us to stay on target, the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
And in spite of the problems that confronts us and the issues, we can't allow it to stop us from getting the job done. Early, Jerusalem, then Ezra, and then Nehemiah were all charged in rebuilding Jerusalem, and each of them ran into problems. But in spite of running into problems, they had to keep going and not turn around. When I look at the fifth verse, I see here that Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. And Ezra was teaching the people. I can tell you right now, even though we may be going through trials and tribulations, but those of us that have been called out by God to be leaders, we have to still continue to teach. Yes, there are going to be ears that are going to not hear. There are going to be eyes that are going to refuse to see. But we still got to keep teaching anyhow. Because it's the Lord that will open the ears. It's the Lord that will open the eyes. And I can tell you right now, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You can't do it on your own. Only God can do it. In spite of the issues, the people has to be tough. We have to be tough, church. We have to be steadfast and unmovable. We got to realize and understand no matter what it is that we are going through, we have to be strong and like Teflon if we say that we are leaders for the Lord. Leaders when we teach God's word, I can tell you it blesses the Lord. When I look at 1 through 5, the Bible says that the people paid close attention to Ezra as he read God's word and their faith and their lives begin to change. I can tell you no matter what it is that we may be doing, it seems like the people are not listening, but the reality is we got to continue to preach the word. We got to continue to share the word. We got to continue to stay on bending knees before the Lord because God will open the door for those who refuse to hear, but then their ears will be in a posture of hearing. We have to go forth in spite of and the more we are in the word, the stronger we will be. The stronger we will become. Life gets tough. But don't give up. We can't give up, church. There's joy in the Lord. And then I think about the second point that Nehemiah was trying to get to us. When I look at this verse here, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah said in the ninth verse that Ezra the priest, and he said, and I as governor and the Levites who were assisting me, he, he let us know here, don't cry on such a day as this. Don't you cry on such a day as this. For today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. We got to stop going around crying all the time. But we got to be able to stand on God's faith. We got to be able to stand on the promises of God. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And when I look at that phrase, the joy of the Lord is your strength. I see a couple of things here. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's special. The, 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 the joy of the Lord is your strength. And still repeating that same word. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Let me say it again. The joy of the Lord 
is your strength, great God from Zion. It's yours. It's your strength, the joy of the Lord. I love putting real emphasis on this thing today. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Let me say it again. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Isn't God good today? I can tell you right now, you may be a parent, but a mom's strength is limited. But the Lord's strength is all powerful. You may be a dad out there today. Understand that your strength is limited. But in the Lord, it's powerful. I can tell you, your financial resources may be limited. But the Lord, there is no limit in his strength. Your health condition, your health situation may be faltered and leave you physically weak. But the Lord's strength, great God from Zion, the Lord's strength is perfect and complete. It doesn't matter what comes our way, no matter whether it is personal or routine, whether or not you're having ups or having downs. It doesn't matter whether you're going through some good times or going through some bad times. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Isn't it all right? I said the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah understood that for the joy of the Lord, it is your strength. I just want you to know right now that the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And then I think about the third point that Nehemiah was trying to get over. And he talked about the fact that you've got to practice joy. Great God from Zion. We got to practice joy. It doesn't just come naturally. You got to believe that there's joy. You got to know that there's joy. You got to walk like there's joy. You got to talk like there's joy. You got to practice this thing, church. For this joy I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. We got to stay in the Word of God to get the joy. We got to stay in the face of God to keep the joy. I look over here and see that the people wept openly as they heard the scriptures being read, for they acknowledge their sins. I can tell you right now, if you're going to be a leader, you got to stay in the Word. Because after a while, the Word will prick a heart somewhere. The Word will prick a mind somewhere. Just like with Nehemiah, the people begin to realize that their sins, they begin to acknowledge their sins. Nehemiah, the governor, stood up, reminded the people that this first day of the year was a special feast day of the Lord. Isn't he all right? Isn't he all right? He comforted them by saying, Go, I want you to go eat of the fat, drink of the sweet and send portions to them who have nothing. We got to give of ourselves. We can't afford to be lazy workers. We got to be bold soldiers. For the day is holy to our Lord. 
Do not grieve, for joy is of the Lord, and it's your strength. I don't know about you, but joy, unspeakable joy. God is all right today. I don't know about you, but I still have joy. I said I still have joy, no matter what it is that I'm going through. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. There, there, there were times in my life I felt that I couldn't go on. But the Lord, He blessed me and made me strong. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. In the all right, I get joy when I think about all the things he's done for me. He's broken, in spite of broken habits, in spite of my sin, in spite of what I have done wrong, I thank God for forgiving God. I thank God for loving God. I thank God for a God that gives us another chance. I don't know about you, but joy, joy, I talk about that unspeakable joy. I can tell you right now that is amazing grace. How sweet it sound. He saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I can see. I can tell you that joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I can tell you right now that at times when God got angry, and yes, God is angry right now, He has allowed a pandemic to come forth. But in spite of a pandemic coming forth, God still have us in the bosom of His arms. I just want you to know that when I look over at Psalm 35, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I can tell you, I don't know about you, but I know that joy of the Lord is your strength. What a mighty God we serve. I said, what a mighty God we serve. We got to trust him right now. And to know that whatever it is that we're going through, that the Lord is our strength. He is the one that will make a way out of no way. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will create God from Zion. I said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, for thou rod and thou staff may comfort me. I just want you to know that the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord, by having the joy of the Lord, gives you power. Having the joy of the Lord gives you Holy Ghost power. The joy of the Lord will make you walk right. The joy of the Lord will make you walk right. The joy of the Lord will make you live right. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Know that He's able to keep us from stumbling. He's able to keep us from falling. I don't know about you, but if you hear what I'm saying here today, let me know by just giving me a tap on Facebook. <laughs> just say, thank you, Jesus. Give me some thumbs up. Not for me, but for the Lord. For he's worthy. I said he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Has God been good to you? I know he's been good to me, for the joy of the Lord is your strength.
the doors of the church are now open and I want you to know and understand again as I've been saying all along the church is not the brick and the mortar the church is us and through Jesus the Christ we are opening the doors. God is allowing us to open the doors. He just want us. He just want to come in. If we just receive him. There might be someone right now who. Don't have a church home. Hallelujah. You may not have a church home. But I want you to just be willing to surrender. And to know that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. The joy of the Lord will make a way out of no way even when you can't see your way through. The doors are open right now. Yes, you may have some concerns and some issues that may be going on in your life right now. But I can tell you if you just have the joy of the Lord He'll give you the strength to hold on and to hold out. Isn't he worthy to be praised? Just like Nehemiah, God gave Nehemiah the strength. Even though it appears he was talking to some people that refuse to acknowledge their sins. But the time came that they realized and they came running, asking for God's forgiveness. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord, he can make a way out of no way. If we just trust him right now, let go. And allow God to abide. There may be someone right now who needs prayer. Because I can see right now there's someone who is going through some stuff right now. But just understand that the joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. He's knocking on the door of your heart right now. All you have to do is open the door of your heart and let him in. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Isn't he worthy to be praised? Isn't he a right now God? No matter what you're going through, God will make a way out of no way. God will see you through even though your natural eyes are blind. But God will give you a spiritual eye to be able to walk through the valley of the shadows of death. Fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. God is with me. My Father is with me. Great God from Zion. Know that he's able. He's able. For after all the things I've been through, I still have joy. Do you have joy right now? Do you have that unspeakable joy? Even when I felt like I couldn't go on. But the Lord, he blessed me. And he made me strong. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. Father God in heaven, we thank you right now. I thank you for this word, oh God. I thank you for the blessed word that has gone forth this day. I'm asking you, oh God, there may be someone out there who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. Oh God, let them open up the doors of their hearts and let you come in. We thank you right now, oh God. For Forestfield New Redeemer. 
We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your joy. But this joy I have, I have, the world can't give it. And the world can't take it away. Oh, are you ready for the joy of the Lord? Why should you be ready for the joy of the Lord? Because it's your strength. Great God from Zion. I don't know about you, but I love that kind of strength. Because nobody can do me like Jesus. I don't care who you think you may be, but nobody can do me like Jesus. So God, I say thank you right now. Bless and keep us. Hold us and never leave us. In all of these blessings I ask in your name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Again, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for joining this broadcast today. And to ask you to continue to share with your friends and your neighbors and your colleagues as well as your family members. I want you to like this page. We try to do, we're not a perfect church, but we are a church that's striving for perfection. And we want you to just tune in with us because we are a loving church. We are a caring church. And we just want to say thank you. And thank you for joining us and please feel free to email us, feel free to write in, feel free to put on the chat areas whatever you want to share with us because we're going to do the best we can to get back with you. I just want to say that before we leave this broadcast that we continue to keep Deacon Austin in prayer. I thank God for this brother that's full of love, full of sharing, and a man that's full of caring, as well as Brother Philip Jones, that we keep him in prayer as well. And I just want to say, because I love encouraging our young people, and I just want to say to Minister Kristen, uh, I heard you had a great virtual conference on yesterday. I am her. I am her. And in that conference you talked about the spiritual woman, the sister friend, the healed woman, the mother, the woman, the businesswoman, and the wife. I know that was a powerful, powerful conference on yesterday. And you keep on keeping on doing what God has ordained you to do. Eyes have not seen, seen, ears have not heard. Just continue to be humble and allow God to use you. Because he has a lot for you. I can tell you right now that the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I just want to say thank you. And don't forget, starting on tomorrow, Monday, Monday evening, don't forget our Vacation Bible School, which will be virtual. And please look on our website, and it gives you all the information that you need. So until next week, no. amen. I just want to just say that we love you. And then I want to give a special shout out to Shirley Robinson. Amen. Just want to say to her, happy birthday. But not only Shirley, I just want to wish all of the July babies. Amen. I want to wish uh, uh, Lady Di. Amen. And there's so many others, Sister Sabrina. Amen. And Sister Cynthia Carr. And, and Reverend Coltley. Amen. Amen. I just want to wish all of you guys 
some I may have missed, but you know who you are. Happy birthday. May God bless you until we meet again. Have a great day. Amen. God bless you all.